The year was 2008. I was about to start my career as an orthopedic surgeon. Graduation, dinner, and yearly birthday celebrations were already planned. This year, it would be Jamaica. I always went way out on my birthday. I considered it a personal holiday. The plan was to celebrate, go home to see my family, and then start my new job. I could see the light at the end of the tunnel. September came, and I was getting ready to go home to Mississippi. I knew my mother would be so happy. Her birthday had just passed. I could spend some quality time with her. I had always felt guilty because I hardly ever went home. I was an orthopedic resident, and free time was a luxury. I was in the hair salon when my cell phone rang, which I usually don't answer, but I did that day. It was the hospital. I was shocked. I could barely hear. There's always a lot of noise in hair salons. It was a nurse on the phone. She said my mother was in the hospital in Jackson, Mississippi. She had gotten sick the night before, and they had to send her to Jackson to Baptist Hospital for some tests. While I was on the phone with the nurse, my mother became lethargic, and they are about to send her to the intensive care unit. I was worried. My mother was a breast cancer survivor. She was a fighter and had battled cancer for seven years. She had had a mastectomy, chemotherapy, and radiation. She never let it touch her spirit. She also loved me and never wanted me to worry about her. This felt different, but I was hopeful, and I believed no matter what, God could heal her in spite of the fact that she had stage 4 breast cancer. I always believed. I finished getting my hair fixed, then headed home to pack. I talked to my brother and sister-in-law. My sister-in-law, Nikki, calmed me. She told me after my mother was transferred to the ICU, she was okay. She was talking, breathing on her own, and was in great spirits. She said the doctors were running tests. I arrived in Mississippi, and we headed straight to the hospital. I saw my mother, my heart. She did not look well. Her stomach was swollen. She seemed confused. I talked to a nurse. The nurse had the mindset that it was the end for my mom. I could not accept that. We stayed at the hospital all day. My brother lived in Jackson, Mississippi, so I stayed there versus going to my hometown, Brookhaven, Mississippi, which is about 45 minutes away. So many people came to see her, and she loved it. She always brightened up when she had company. I was supposed to be home for two weeks and then start my new job. My mother was in the hospital the whole time. I could not leave and start my life with my mom in the hospital. My job understood, but I did have to return to go to a meeting. Mom never got better. Her doctors kept bugging us to decide whether we would resuscitate her in the event that she stopped breathing or her heart stopped. I was not at a point that I wanted to let my mom go. My mother was going to live. That woman had bet to stop messing with me. I could not do that. She got to the point that she was stable, so they put her in a regular room. I had so much to do. She had bills to be paid. I had to be there for my mom. She could not feed herself, but she ate. She got more confused. She knew me and was lucid in and out. She always loved to tell stories. I think she was telling stories at times when I did not know what she was talking about. The nurses and my mother's doctor talked to my mother and me about discharge. She was stable enough to leave the hospital. However, she could not go home, and she did not have long-term care insurance. Also, she did not have much money saved. I was overwhelmed. I had so much to do. The social worker gave us the names of some nursing homes that provided skilled nursing care rehab. I thought we could do that. Maybe she could get better that way. She had 30 days of coverage from Medicare because she had been in the hospital, meaning that she could stay at a nursing home for 30 days without payment due to her Medicare insurance coverage. So we picked out a nursing home that she had been to once before after a hospital stay. The nurses were nice there. I went to her house, and I found the flowers that had sent her for her birthday. She had gotten sick the day they came. She could not even put them in a vase. They were dead now. I could not take it. I broke down and cried. Was this symbolic of what was to come with my mother? 